Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Kyle Downey, and this is the Sports Download, the show where a Los Angeles native talks sports from a fan's perspective. I might not be unbiased, but I keep it honest and real with you. All right, let's get to it. We got a lot to talk about today. Let's let's jump into it. So, Dame Lillard was traded to the Bucks yesterday, as I'm recording here on Thursday, uh, September 28th. Dame Lillard was traded to the Bucks as part of a three-team deal with Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Tumani, Kamara, a 2029 un- unprotected Milwaukee first and unprotected Milwaukee swap rights in 2028 and 2030 going to the Blazers. Phoenix lands Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. All right, so not what we expected. We expected Dame to get traded, but it looked like he was going to go to Miami. It just was taking a while. We didn't know when that was going to happen. And apparently, you know, Miami uh, played hardball too much and didn't didn't make a solid offer, didn't make their best offer. And also, I think uh, Damian Lillard's agent uh, going out there saying he only wanted to go Miami made it difficult for him to get there. Uh, it's historically worked better for for NBA players when they have at least a list of a few teams, three or four or five maybe, that they'd be interested in being traded to. So that's what happened. I think that the Bucks got better offensively, but defensively, no, because I don't. Uh, Grayson Allen is a dirty player, but he plays defense, and um, and uh, Drew Holiday is an excellent uh, defender and a solid offensive player and so he's definitely going to be moved again and traded again since the um the blazers don't have need for him with their young talent that they have with scoot henderson but uh i think the bucks are definitely formidable still they are they already were but they will have to make up for that lack of defense and maybe that'll be uh maybe that'll be through scoring more but um definitely Definitely helped Giannis. Giannis in the last few weeks, uh, in the last month or so, he's twice said that he would stay with Milwaukee unless it's better for him to leave. And I think that put the pressure on them to make this deal. Um, I mean, obviously you do it if you're if you're Milwaukee, but I don't know. I we'll just have to see how it plays out. During the regular season, they'll be excellent, but during the playoffs, that lack of defense might affect them. They might have to make some other moves down the line. And quickly, uh, since we're an LA-based show, I'll say that quickly, Phoenix getting getting some depth. I mean, Grayson Allen is a good defender; he can shoot. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic is a good offensive player, but he's bad on defense. So they got. They got worse. They got a little worse by trading DeAndre Ayton. I know that Ayton was not happy there. And probably cut ties on him too soon because, I mean, it makes sense why they would trade him because of what they're going for. But trading him before Frank Vogel gets to work with him is a mistake because Frank Vogel loves working with big men. And that uh, that's probably a mistake. And, again, I don't buy into Phoenix. I don't think that they're a bad team, but I... I think that they are kind of a house of cards because they're based off three players that have all had injury issues at the top, and then they have some depth, but they don't have much defense. So I love Frank Vogel, but it's going to take a lot for him and his staff to get that team to play some defense. But they're going to score a lot. As long as they're, most of their guys are healthy, they're going to score a lot. Um and so Dame Dame had been this whole Dame trade saga is finally over. Dame's camp said that he would ask for a trade if he was traded anywhere other than Miami. That is probably probably just a front that they put up because they really wanted to go to Miami. Because he really wanted to go to Miami. I don't I don't see him doing that now because he's paired with Giannis who's one of the greatest players, uh one of the top 75 player top three player in the league at least right now um so i don't see that happening uh it 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 was right before this happened the raptors had shown interest the heat the bucks the celtics the 76ers and the bulls uh 
I don't know why the Celtics didn't do this. I'm happy. As a Lakers fan, I'm happy the Celtics didn't do it. But I don't know why they wouldn't go for it. That seems seems to be a mistake. But uh, I'm glad. I'm glad because I don't. I'm against Boston all the way. So if the Lakers make the finals, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough matchup against Dame and Giannis. That pick and roll is gonna be dirty and and give some shooting, give some more shooting for them. But again, they will miss the defense from Drew Holiday and Grayson Allen. So we'll have to see if they make other trades moving down they will miss that perimeter defense because dame is not a good defender he's i don't know if he's bad or decent but he's not good so he's an excellent excellent all-time offensive player but he is not a good defender all right let's hop into the lakers so the lakers training camp is going to open up uh next week uh we got media day coming up next week early October and it's going to be then it's going to be training camp media day media day training camp and then um and then preseason and then the season started really exciting time I love basketball is my favorite sport Lakers my favorite team can't wait they got a good solid roster can't wait so it's going to be fun uh some notes here that I didn't get to because I hadn't talked to y'all in a while Vando, the Vandalorian, Jared Vanderbilt, got a four-year, $48 million extension with a player option. Great for him. It's a little higher than I thought he would get, but I think uh, as the salary cap continues to go up, it's not going to be that big of a deal, and it might. it's going to be it's a pretty reasonable contract. I think it's right now it seems a little high, but as the salary cap continues to go up, it's going to be maybe a little more than a mid-level exception, and... If he continues to play well defensively and he can pick up some offensive, if uh, his his uh, training in the offseason helps him with attacking the basket and if he's able to hit just even a little bit of some three-pointers from the corner, uh, that would be amazing. It's going to be a steal. So, but already I think it's a reasonable deal for a good, solid, uh, versatile defender who uh, really hustles and gets rebounds. So happy for Vando, happy that we we locked him up long term. You got him locked up long term. You got Austin Reeves locked up to like a three or four year deal. And then Anthony Davis through 2028. So those are guys that they have built moving forward. Now, you never know who could get traded, but I would obviously want them to keep Reeves and Vando. Definitely want them to keep Anthony Davis, but uh, you never know what what opens up later on. In, later on but... Let's, we don't have to worry about that right now. As for right now, it looks like Anthony Davis and Reeves are your cornerstones, and then you also have Vando, who's also locked up long-term for now. Um, but again, we'll see what happens there. And uh, so also I saw on the Lakers' Twitter account, they had they were showing LeBron broke just like an immense amount of records, just crazy amount of records um in year 20 he just i mean obviously he broke the scoring record but he broke he broke just crazy just like just so many records so so many different records so i mean lebron haters like uh somebody i won't name i won't even mention his name but <laughs> somebody who's on television LeBron haters will say, you know, it's longevity records, but who cares? Who cares? I mean, he's played 20 years, so if he deserves those longevity records because he's consistently great. So some of these, let's go through. October 20th last year, uh, ma he made it to the top 10 three-pointers made. And then most 20-point games in NBA history. Uh, passed Hakeem Olajuwon for ninth most steals in the NBA fourth most threes in Lakers franchise history and he's only been there he's only been there uh since 2018 ninth all-time for three-pointers made fourth fourth most assists in NBA history passing Steve Nash uh he became the all-time scorer as we as we know in April 20 on April 24th he became the first Laker since Shaq in 04 to grab 20 points and 20 plus rebounds in a playoff game and that's a first for his career I remember that it was pretty special for him 
uh, past Kareem on May 8th for the most two-pointers made in playoffs history. May 12th, fourth most rebounds in playoff history. Playoff history series wins, 41. 2000 club for playoff passes, playoff assists, May 18th. Uh, May 20th, past Bill Russell for fifth most playoff double doubles. 8,000 career playoff points, 2,000 more than any other player. Just, just amazing, incredible uh, what LeBron has done in his career and what he continues to do. So I just, I just thought I'd want to go through that thread that they had because just, I mean, it's incredible what he's, what he's able to do, the way he's kept himself in shape and the way he's been healthy for most of his career. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. And you got to give him his props, whether you like LeBron or not, you got to give him his props for what he's been able to accomplish on the basketball court. And obviously here on this channel, we are huge LeBron fans because, uh, you know, I liked LeBron before, before he came to the Lakers, but once he became a Laker and once he became a Laker, I was more of a fan of him and just seeing him on my team do so well, I became a huge fan of his. And also what he, uh, after he won the championship that year after we lost Kobe during COVID and everything, I became, I became a huge LeBron, LeBron fan and respect him a lot for just him as the player, him as the man and everything that he's done for this organization and Laker fans. Also, Zach Lowe said last week that he thinks the Lakers are in the mix. He was on uh, one of the, I think he was on, I think he was on NBA Today on ESPN, and he said the Lakers are in the mix for title contention below Denver, Phoenix, and Boston. So, love to hear that. Zach Lowe is really level-headed. Uh, he, he's a very good writer and uh knows what he's talking about when it comes to NBA and I respect him don't always agree with his opinions but a lot of times I will agree and here of course I will agree and obviously like I say in the opening I am I am biased but I do agree with him that they're in the mix for title contention contention even after the Dame Lillard trade I don't think that's changed I think they're below Denver but Denver got a little worse Lakers got a little better I wouldn't put them below Phoenix. I wouldn't do that because I think Phoenix is could be really good, but we still don't know because the health is a question. Health is a question for all teams, but Phoenix in particular because they have three stars with injury issues. They have three stars with injury injury, injury issues. Kevin Durant has uh, had injuries and not played a lot in the last few se last couple seasons. Devin Booker gets injured sometimes, even though he's young, he gets injured sometimes. And Bradley Beal has not played a lot. And I granted that's also him being in Washington. So I would put the Lakers above Phoenix. So if he's got so he's got Denver, Phoenix, Boston, then the Lakers. I would say probably Denver and then right behind Lakers and and then Boston above Phoenix because. I mean, Boston traded for Porzingis, so there's an injury risk there. But and they're dealing without uh, Mark Smart. But I think the Bucks probably shoot up above. The, right now, the Bucks are title favorites because of trading for Dame. Uh, I wouldn't put them number one. I think that's that's the hot thing that Vegas is trying to get people to make bets. That's the thing we got to remember too. Just a quick note for fans that may not know, the Vegas numbers they do that based on who's going to place bets as well. Like it's pretty close, but they also do that based on who's going to bet what. That's why you see the Lakers always have higher odds no matter what, because of the fan base, they want people to put money on it. So you got to factor that in. So even though the bucks are title favorites right now in Vegas, that isn't title favorites doesn't mean anything. It, you just got to see what happens on the floor and like based on the analytics and the team and everything else and chemistry and all that stuff but so i would put the bucks up there but they're not number one in my opinion i think you gotta give that respect to denver 
and then prob I would say probably Denver Lakers Bucks something like that. And again, I'm biased, but if the Lakers can stay healthy with LeBron and AD relatively healthy and be healthy for the playoffs, we have depth that that will be conducive for a playoff run. And we still could they still could make trades. They still could trade uh D'Angelo Russell later on in the season if they feel the need to. But you know, ideally, hopefully, D'Angelo can just continue to play well and play well in the playoffs because I, re- I really do like him. I like his game. I just, he just he's he's got to make shots in the playoffs. He's got to make shots, and if he's not looking good by the trade deadline, then he might be traded because he's got to make shots because that's m- mainly his offensive ability is his best ability, passing and shooting. Defense, he's not he's not a good defender. So, we'll see. So, I'll put the Lakers up there in title contention for sure. All right, and I saw that Austin Reeves said LeBron's uh, player minicamp was good. They did it out in uh, San Diego. He said it was great, and AD is shooting the ball really well right now, which is great to hear. Uh, He's been telling AD to shoot more because he's unguardable when he shoots it well. That is definitely true. We saw that in the bubble that when he was making threes, when he was making jumpers, he is unguardable. And if he could, if he could bring his shot to a respectable level, even just so they can respect him from the three, he is literally unstoppable in offense. Uh, also, they had some nice dinners, some workouts. It was a, a lot of bonding time, which is great for team chemistry. Great for the new guys to get acclimated. He said the coaches were there, but it wasn't. They they did some training drills, but a lot of five on zero stuff, like light work. Basically, they had a little mini camp, but it, it's it's great for bonding. LeBron does this, has done this every year since I believe his first year, definitely since the 2019 20 year, and and it's great. I mean, this at the mini camp a couple years ago is when LeBron and the Lakers figured out, oh, Reeves is legit and he can play. So that might that might help that might help uh factor in to see how some of these guys look uh coming in ahead of preseason. And then we'll have to see how some of these guys look in preseason where they where they slot in as far as the rotation. Some of these new guys. Uh he also said that Everyone looks good. Um, everyone looks good, which is great if they're looking healthy and everything, looking in in shape um, is excellent. And uh, Reeves also said, I forgot where he said this, but he said that the Lakers are the most talented team. Um, they have a lot of talent and they have a lot of depth. I don't, I don't know if they're the most talented team, but the fact that I heard Dan Wicke say this to Andy Kamenetsky on the Lockdown Lakers pod, is that the fact that it's debatable and it makes you think, it makes you consider the Lakers being the most talented team, is excellent. Love that. I mean, because this time last year, we still had Russell Westbrook on the roster, and the roster didn't make sense. We had a bunch of guards. This roster is more, more balanced. We got guards. We got forwards. We got bigs now. Now that we signed the... Um, Christian Wood, we have a balanced roster, which is amazing. I love it. I love it. I hope they do, hope they continue to do this moving forward uh, with a couple stars and depth because that is a willing, winning formula, and I think that's going to be the easiest way to win in this new CBA. Next, Phil Handy and Austin Reeves, along with Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman of the Dodgers, Phil Handy unless y'all don't know is the Lakers assistant coach uh Jordan Canada of the LA Sparks Justin Herbert from the Chargers they all participated in a talent show for a fundraiser for American Lung uh, American Lung Association Jordan Canada won for singing beautifully I haven't watched it I want to watch it see what everybody's talents were but it was hosted by Spectrum Sportsnet with Chris McGee and Robert Ory and uh Ali Clifton, uh, but Jordan Canada, yeah, congratulations, and you have a beautiful singing voice, which we did not know. I think it's really cool, really cool that um, all these athletes participate in this, uh, show off their other talents beside their respective sports, 
and for a great cause for the American Lung Association their their goal is to is to obviously uh, promote lung health and raise money so that they can they can uh, continue to um, continue to help people with with uh, lung diseases and uh, you know everything from asthma to lung cancer and also they have they have funds to help people with with uh, COVID and you know after COVID they established this fund to to avoid any future uh, respiratory pandemics to happen in the future so great cause wonderful congratulations again to Jordan Canada and did not know you could sing like that you, you could sing you could sing it was real good really good really awesome next up Jeannie Buss told The Athletic on a podcast that she got death threats for the Lakers two and ten start uh, twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three uh, last season. That's unacceptable, uh, Lakers fans. We should never threat, never death threats. That's not. That's that's inhuman, inhumane. That's disrespectful, rude, um, very very dark just horrible i remember when they had they uh there was lakers fans giving death threats to danny green when he wouldn't hit the shot he didn't hit the shot game five in the nba finals 2020 it's like come on guys it's just basketball you know we we all want our team to do well but let's not take it that far some some people are just uh take it too far and are crazy and maybe need some help that's that's too far. That's unfortunate that that happened. Um, I love Jeannie Buss and what she's done for the Lakers and what she's done for the L.A. community. Let's do better, Lakers fans. Let's not do that. That's all I got to say about that. Let's not do that. Uh, root for the team. You boo them if they're not doing good. But if you want to boo, but you know, go on Twitter, voice your frustrations respectfully. But no death threats ever. Let's Let's do better. Uh, Jeannie Buss also told uh, KCAL, CBS KCAL Sportsnet LA with Jim Hill that it wouldn't surprise her if LeBron p- played five more seasons. He probably won't, in my opinion. Uh, but I see why she said that. His play with this many years and this many miles in this league is unprecedented. The fact, all those records I told you that he's breaking. But he's still, like, he averaged, like, 27 last year. So I don't think he's going to play five more years. I think he would love to play with Bronny in the league, hopefully on the Lakers, uh, so he can stay a Laker. Um, but I know he just wants to play with Bronny. Uh, and Bronny is is uh, doing well, by the way. I believe he's going to be able to start USC soon. They said uh, Coach Andy Enfield of USC Basketball said Bronny's doing very well, but we just can't comment on anything medically. He's going to going to class and doing extremely well in class, and we're really excited for him. So he's he missed his first practice, but hopefully, hopefully um, so he's recovering well. Hopefully, he can play soon. But so I know LeBron wants to play with Bronny in the league. Uh, and that could be probably next year. It looks like Bronny could be a first round draft pick, but five years is a lot because you're talking about a guy, LeBron's going to be in November. He's going to be 39 and 45 is hard or 44 would be hard. Uh, I know, uh, Tom Brady did it, but you know, basketball, football, a lot different. Tom Brady didn't take a lot of hits. And LeBron has used to be a high flyer, jumping a lot, and it's just incredible that he's been playing this long <laughs> at this at this high level. He's still a top ten player, probably a top five to eight player at least, maybe. He's yeah, he's definitely a top eight player. Anyway, the fact that he is that good still at this at this age, at this many this many miles, this many years is is a medical miracle a medical marvel it's it's amazing uh so but five more years is really hard to say because he's already 21 years in but uh m genie bus also said it would be his decision obviously respecting his his decision and 
obviously it's his decision because it's his career, his life. But uh, just, I mean, it's not crazy to say that he could play five more seasons. I don't think it's crazy. I think it's probably not realistic, but it's not insane. I think he maybe plays two or three more years. I think, if anything, as Lakers fans, as NBA fans, as basketball fans, we need to appreciate his greatness and just appreciate every moment because one day in a few years coming soon, LeBron won't be in the league anymore. And so we need to appreciate his greatness every single night and enjoy that because I know I miss Kobe playing. I miss Kobe being here, obviously. Rest in peace to him and Gigi and everyone that passed away. But but uh, I remember when he was retired, I, I, I was kind of sad because for 20 years, most of those 20 years I watched him from the time I was four to 24, he was a, he was a Laker. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important to appreciate these guys as they go out and, and compete and play at such a high level because LeBron James, there will never be another LeBron James. There will be somebody else great, but there will never be another LeBron James. So we need to appreciate him as he's as he's still playing. We need to appreciate him and his greatness. And if you get a chance to go out and see him at a Laker game or anywhere, if you get a chance to see him play, take it. I know it's not I know it's not uh, affordable to everyone, but if you get a chance to go see him, do it. I would highly recommend it. I haven't seen him in person yet. I would love to go see him. Um, also, winning time was canceled. I was really sad about that. I really liked the show. I think that it wasn't, as I, I talked about here on the channel, I really liked winning time. I do think it got softer uh, in its approach. They didn't have what they didn't show all of the story about, like, the, the partying that they would do with the, you know, the you know they would ha like magic was with a lot of women and they stopped showing that as much and so it was less realistic but i'm still sad that the show ended and obviously it really sucked that it and then also sucked that it ended with the celtics winning it's called winning time and it's about the lakers dominance so it's kind of unfortunate should have ended with the lakers winning in 88 uh their final championship of the 80s but I mean, maybe it can re, re uh, uh, maybe it can be resurrected, brought back. Maybe uh, maybe Showtime can pick it up and they can actually call it Showtime. That would be great. <laughs> uh, but as for now, it's canceled. And but I've seen some rumors that maybe they could pick it up, and that would be great because those actors, everyone, the cast was amazing, and uh, I would love, I would continue to watch it. I've watched both seasons. I enjoyed it. So that's a bummer. Um, one more Dame Lillard note it has nothing to do with his trade, <laughs> but he was on a podcast with a bunch of dudes, uh, and Dame Lillard said the bubble championship is legit because everyone was the freshest physically because they didn't have to travel. So for all you bubble championship deniers, stop it because here's another player saying that that everybody was fresh. They didn't have to travel. They they were they were healthy. They had that time off from COVID. They had a couple months off to rest and recuperate. Because the NBA season is a grind. You get little injuries, little oh my finger's sore, my leg is sore, and then you gotta travel, which even though they fly in private, it still affects their bodies when they play back to backs and things like that. So Dame Lillard said it shouldn't be discredited and there you go. There you go. It should not be because everybody had the same conditions. It's a weird title. It's a weird year, but everybody had the same conditions. If y'all mad, if y'all say that the Lakers won a Mickey Mouse ring, why didn't your team win? If it was so easy, why didn't your team win? Exactly. Because it wasn't easy. It was possibly more. It was probably more difficult because they had to be away from their family and everybody had the same conditions, like I said. So there it is. Let's end it. It won't be ended because people keep talking about it three seasons later, three years later, but whatever. <laughs> that, that's, we should end it there. <laughs>